This video is presented by Media Calico Comics. Please go to my Patreon page in the description below and become a patron. And now without further ado, please enjoy the video. See the amazing walrus and his sharp shooting terror tusks! Just watch the sparks near my fuel tank flippers. Step right this way to feast your eyes on the miraculous, the magnificent, the marvelous and wondrous wonder toy. You'll see stunts! You'll see runs! And if you come at our call, You'll see the most astounding amusement of all! From every corner of Cuckoo's Nest, the loonies of Halfworld crowd in, drawn by the promise of pleasure. You've got him hooked, Lady Lila. Now for the sales pitch. Yes, ladies and gents, the Wonder Toy. What is it, you ask? Just another goo -ga guild to get you to giggle through your next idle hour? No, the Wonder Toy is the ultimate amusement. It'll thrill you. It'll chill you. Used too often, it just may kill you. But I won't ask you to take on faith. What you can see, demonstrate it with your own eyes. That's Pico's cue for me to start the puppet show. What's the matter, Jenny? You're looking kinda shattered. I've lost all my marbles, Punch! And I don't know where to find them! That's cause you ain't playing with a full deck, Jenny. You're half-wit that needs to be made whole. <laughs> and the Wonder Toy can help! Why, Punch! You're right! My think tank's been refused! Thanks to the Wonder Toy, my mind isn't running on empty anymore! Yay! More! Show us more! The Lunnies of half exist to be entertained. And Uncle Pico keeps the pleasures coming. More? Of course there's more! To dispel all doubts! How about a living endorsement of the wizardry of the Wonder Toy? Yes! Show us! More fun! Party, y'all! Clowns! You're on, Rocket! My friends, you see before you a wreck of a raccoon! Wreck of a raccoon? This poor pup was born with an AIQ. That's animal intelligence quotient, so low as to be practically non-existent. What I'm saying is that he had an empty closet where most of us have brains. The best doctors on Halfworld pronounced his condition incurable. Easier to grow daisies in a desert, they said than to try and grow grey matter in the vacuum of this lad's cranial cavity. But then along came the Wonder Toy. <sniffs> Watch, my friends, how this brainless beast fumbles about, seeking to remove the Wonder Toy until, at last, his desperate digits encounter a series of holes in the helmet's side. Now watch the change that comes over him as wiggling his paws in those holes. This poor pitiful pup unknowingly uses the helmet's electromagnetic fields to manipulate his own mind. See? He's already learned what's good for him through positive feedback. And you can learn what's good for you, too. It works on imbeciles as well as those who are just plain loony. Who'll be the first to unlock the secrets of and properly balance his or her own brain? Me! I do! 
I want one. Me too. We'll pay. Put your animal crackers away. These fabulous wonder toys don't cost a thing. They are free, and there are enough for all. There is a frenzied rush to accept Pico's introductory offer, while a certain raccoon staggers from the wagon. Loyla, I love you! But Rocket, I know you two. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Mixing business with pleasure, Rocket? Well, I... I couldn't help myself. I put on the wonder toy, touched my mind, and was suddenly overwhelmingly aware of the depths of my love for Lila. And you were sane to begin with, Rocket Raccoon. Think how the loonies must be feeling right now. As the wonder toys trigger their awareness, for the first time, of their own minds. Remember what we learned, my friends, in the psychiatric diary called the Half-World Bible. Half-World was established as an institutional world to house hopelessly insane humans. Doctors were given robots to help them. Patients were given pets to keep them amused. A cure for the severe mental disorders of mankind was sought in vain. And then, one day, the doctors left. A nearby nova bathed the robots in intense radiation and altered their programming. The logical robots could then no longer stand tending to illogical humans. So they manipulated the animals' genetics to give our ancestors the intelligence to serve as the loonies' keepers. We existed to keep them entertained. And so we did, until two terrible toysmiths, Judson Jakes and Lord Divine, went to war for the right to provide the loonies with pleasure. Each wished to be the only one raking in our currency. The crackers only the loonies can make that we animals will do almost anything for. We can stop that war if we can only hand out a wonder toy to every human on Half-World. Before the toy tyrants send their troops to try and stop us, as the corny wagon pulls up for another corner of Cuckoo's Nest, the increasingly lucid loonies wave goodbye. All that is, except one. No time for frolic, no time for play. It's time now to spy and hear what they say. Once our wonder toys cure the loonies of their madness, they'll have no further need for toys. Oh, that's sad, but I'm glad for the chance I have had to report news that's so bad to the boss at his pad. And so the killer clown's demented dentures soar half of half world away to Mayhem Mechanics Incorporated, where terrible toys are endlessly turned out under the squint-eyed supervision of that maniacal mole Judson Jakes. My friends, my creations, you all know me. Am I what any of you would term a rotten rodent? Yes, your nastiness! Well then, there it is. Why rail against fate, I ask you? If I am rotten, then I should act rotten. And what could be rottener than smashing every insipid, insignificant creature who stands in my way of total toy domination of the Keystone Quadrant? But first, I have to locate my enemies. Rocket Raccoon, the lovely Lila, her guardian walrus, and the traitorous Uncle Pico. My esteemed competitor, and new ally. Now that we've called a truce in our toy war, Lord Divine says that they were slain in the Badlands, yet we've seen no bodies. So where 
Oh, where can my enemies be? Oh, where? Oh, where can they be? They're riding around giving toys out for free! Yes, that is where they do be! Giving toys away? For free? Destroy them! Restrain your rashness, my ally! Eh? My sanctum invaded by a Soren Soren? Hardly an invasion, my dear Judson. More like a friendly visit. A house call, if you will. So that we two co conspirators can discuss strategy. We've nothing to discuss, Divine. I joined forces with you to slay Rocky Raccoon and company, and they're still alive. So my sources tell me, my dear Jakes, but I see no need to be alarmed. Now? Then you haven't heard about the Wonder Toy Rocky Raccoons helping Uncle Pico pedal all over Hepworth. A toy so fiendish that every loony who tries it on suddenly loses all interest in our toys. Dear, dear Judson, even if such a toy existed, which I doubt its distribution will soon be stopped. And we can destroy any in the hands of the loonies when Rocket is dead. Yes. Yes. You're right, Divine. Of course. But what of after we've crushed Rocket Raccoon? I trust. You are referring to the division of spoils between us, my friend. There is no need to fear. I have it on good authority that the robots are preparing to leave Half-World. In some sort of spaceship. Which presents you and I with the golden opportunity to expand our spheres of influence and to increase our profits while dividing our markets in half. Half of half room for you, half of half room for me. And enough customers for both of our toys? Agreed, Divine. Now, let's get rid of Rock and Raccoon! Yes! Let's! And so the combined corporate cadres of Mayhem Mechanics and Space Wheel Industries set forth, hell-bent on the destruction of Rocket Raccoon! There's just one more <coughs> minor formality required to seal our bargain, my dear Jake. A contract? My dear Divine, don't you trust me? Meanwhile, back at Cuckoo's Nest. Howdy, folks. Step right up and get the toys. That will bring you lots of joys. I do hope this is our last stop for a robot. Even a robo-horse like me. Continued close contact with such illogical beings as these loonies can be most unsettling. 
I think we've hit every word and handed out a wonder toy to every human. I can't believe that Jets and Jakes and Lord Divine haven't tried to stop us yet. They thought they'd killed us back in the Badlands, sweet Rhino. But by now, they must realize we're still alive. I'm expecting an attack at any... Rocket? Do you hear what I hear? Can't see as I do. I hear nothing. Sounds quiet as the grave in Cuckoo's Nest to me. So what? The silence, Rocket. On any ordinary day, Cuckoo's Nest would throb with the noise of laughing, singing, playing loonies. But today, the loonies are all sitting silent and still upon the red sward fingers in the finger holes of their wonder toys, manipulating their minds and... Thinking! By God, Flea, that's what they're doing! The Wonder Toys, never toys at all, but actually therapeutic devices attuned to the loonies' deranged minds are curing the loonies of their insanity. We've given them the means to restore their brain's biological and psychological balances. Soon, They'll be as normal as the ancient shrinks who left them here on Half-World eons ago. Soon, they'll become productive people instead of passive patients, and they'll no longer have the need to be entertained by Divine or Jake's toys. That main trainer is Toys Smith is where you are wrong. Dead wrong. Our prophets in pleasure and we've sworn to destroy any who dares to interfere with our treasure. Sorry, but that's entertainment. The hypocrite, I don't think he's sorry in the least. Goodness! An onslaught! The wonder show's over, folks! Time to shed these carly clothes and get into combat gear! We can't fight here, though, where the loonies might be harmed. So giddy up! Giddy up? Pardon me, but is that quaint colloquialism supposed to merit a serious response? Look, robot, stay and argue semantics and you're soon gonna end up robo-horse-hash! Uh, I get your drift. Well, giddy up it is then, and a tally-ho too. <laughs> Those, those murderous manufacturers, so long as they destroy us, they don't care how many of their potential customers they kill. Both Jix and Divine are too mad to care anymore, sweet Lila. Madder and better, Pico. Do you wish to hear our new creed, Tortoise? The hand that makes toys is the hand that destroys. Truer words were never spoke. Heroes, chew on this. Heads up inside the wagon. We're about to be blitzed by a banana. Having sustained a direct hit, the wagon bearing Rocket Raccoon and company is shaked, rattled, and rolled. Ugh, I can still hear that bomb blasting in my head. I'm going to cut the Robo Horse loose from its harness, Rocket. My, what terribly useful tasks. 
Despair not, my furry friends. Thus far you have fought the good fight alone. But the robots have as much of a responsibility to see to the well-being of the loonies as you animals do. After all, that's why the ancient shrink stumped us on this nuthouse of a world. Hold the fort, I'll be back with the cavalry. That's one mechanical mare that likes mixing metaphors. But how can she possibly get back with help in time? She can't. Which means I'm gonna die without ever knowing whether sanity exists outside this insane keystone quadrant. Come! Come, little playmate! It's time to have fun! To cut down our enemies and watch their blood run! Chip chip chee! They're closing in, gang! Alright, on my signal! Let them eat hot light! A braver battle cry I've never heard. Goodbye, Uncle Pika. I'm sorry I thought you were a sleaze. As long as he worked for Jets and Jakes, you weren't alone in that opinion, Lila. Seconds seem like hours as the epic battle rages. Then, by the rocket's red glare... Lila? Rocket? I... I can bear never having known anything but insanity as long as I've been guardian over the loonies. But what I can't bear is the thought of losing you. And I won't. Not without a fight! Thrusting rocket skates bear the enraged raccoon aloft, and into their enemies' midst. Tree! That's it, you killers! Squeal and scream! I'll teach you to try and destroy my dream! Oh, Rocket, my hero. But so overwhelming are the odds against him. That Rocket Raccoon's moment of glory is tragically short-lived. So, this is the end. Nah, just an intermission. Saved! But who? Who else but Black Jack O'Hare? Former leader of the Black Bunny Assassins. Well, I guess I finally realized that there wouldn't be much future for a merciless mercenary if I let Jake and Divine skin you. I'm touched to her. Truly touched. I'm afraid that Jets and Jakes and I have seen the future, and it, like Half-World, is ours! Over our dead bodies, Divine! I believe that is their intention, Rocket. Yeah, well, no need to remind him. And so the battle is joined again! A battle we'll call Rocket Raccoon's Last Stand! But then... Look! Look to the sky! It's the robots! The robots have arrived! The huge humanoid spacecraft sets down amidst a deafening din of thruster rockets. The conflict stops cold as the combatants stand, too stunned to do anything but stare. And then... Charge! Oh my goodness! Look! It's the loonies! Loony no longer. They're fighting for their world. Oh dear! Oh dear! I must get out of here! Your bizarre behavior has been most unreasonable, clown. We can't allow either you or your murderous masters to escape. And that's no joke. Then... the Wonder Toys worked! 
Yes, Walk. The loonies are killed. As sane as you or I. Give them the credit for that. The loonies are winning. The battle is ending. But no one's caught more divine or Chuds and Jakes. This is the disaster. The loonies thinking. Thanks to the Wonder Toy, they no longer have any need for our toys, or for us. And you said such a toy couldn't exist, Divine. So I made a mistake. So sue me. There they are, on the Dracula, getting away. But it's not enough that Jakes and Divine have lost the battle. No, those two tyrants have got to be punished for their toy war crimes. That rotten raccoon is getting on us, Divine. And for my victory, Mayhem Mechanics. No, I won't feel secure until we reach my orbiting space wheel. I said to the viewers, can't take any more arguing. It's time you two losers got dumped. Stop! What are you? And so the Toy Tyrants' streams of power all end up in the trash. Jake and Devine are down in the dumps all right. The refuse heap for all the discarded toys on Half World. Later! Ranger Rocket, thanks to you, the mind of every human on Cuckoo's Nest has been restored. You found a cure for our insanity that had escaped even the ancient psychiatrists who founded Half World. And now the loonies, uh, humans, want us to help them remake this planet. Remake? Yes, well, Half-World needs restructuring now that it's no longer an asylum for the hopelessly insane. But it's a human world now. There's room for you, your friends, and the robots too, Ranger Rocket. You can assist us, entertain us. That may be okay for animals like Uncle Pike, but most of us want to get off that merry-go-round. So good luck, have a ball. As for us animals and robots, we were put here to help you humans. We've done that. Now it's time for us to seek out our own destiny, our own world, beyond the boundaries of the Keystone Quadrant. Like some quadrupt Noah, Rocket Raccoon leads the animals and robots of Half-World into the huge humanoid arc. Farewell, loyal machines and faithful furry friends. We'll never forget you. Never. The humanoid starship warps through the all-encircling Galassian wall set about the Keystone Quadrant. It had been placed in space by the psychiatrists of an ancient race, a force field fenced to enclose the mentally deranged. It took many years for the robots to deduce how to shut the wall down. That now done, nothing bars the way of the huge ship. And the stars do beckon. You've made it, Rocket. You've escaped the insanity of Half-World. Yeah, only Half-World ain't insane no more. Nor is it very much fun. We won the peace. But we're not the types to rest on our haunches. Nope. 
It's time we lit out for other worlds in need of aid from adventures like Rocket Raccoon and Company. And whether they shall find them, only you and the future can say.